As countries across the world continues to grapple with the coronavirus, Lagos, the epicenter of the virus in Nigeria, has started its vaccination campaign after receiving more than 500,000 doses of the AstraZeneca jab. I'm Adedoja Salam Adeniyi. You're welcome to Inside Lagos. <laughs> State government has rolled out the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines with the State Commissioner for Health, Akin Abayomi, leading the health workers category by taking the first shot, followed by Governor Babajide Sonwulu and his deputy, Obafemi Hamzat, who were there. Health workers are the last line of the defense, and that is why they are the first to be protected to save more people. Lagos State has received more than 507,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccine. The Commissioner for Health is leading the talk despite the controversy around the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine reported to be causing blood clots in some countries. I would like to reassure you that Lagos State and the federal government have gone through extreme lengths to observe what is happening around the world to inspect the scientific data associated with these vaccinations, including the clinical trials. And we believe that the risk of not receiving the vaccine is higher than the chance of you catching the disease and developing a serious illness. So we're encouraging all Lagosians and Nigerians by extension, that they should see this opportunity as an opportunity for us to achieve what is described as herd immunity. Then the governor and his deputy came in to also ascertain the safety and efficacy of the AstraZeneca vaccine for the use of Lagos residents. We'll continue to have our strategy rollout of how people need to be um, vaccinated. I want to um, say that um, let's let's refrain from um, things that information that we know nothing about. So this is my card. Lagos is getting huge amount of the vaccine because it is the epicenter of COVID-19 in Nigeria. The IDH is still the epicenter of the COVID-19 response and that is why Mr. Governor came here for his vaccination. The vaccination program started across three centers, Yaba IDH, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital Lasoth and Federal Medical Center Ibutimeta. In terms of security and crowd control, and we've nominated 88 sites at which the vaccinations will commence. At this point in time, we are commencing the flag off today at three centers right here in Yaba, the Infectious Disease Hospital, Lasut, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, and the Federal Medical Center, Ebutemeta. At these sites, we are going to be vaccinating all the frontline workers today and over the next couple of days to ensure that we are protecting our selfless and hardworking COVID-19 
frontline and essential working staff as a matter of priority. There is a registration portal that is circulating. You can register on that portal. If you are able to satisfy the criteria of phase one, which is essentially medical personnel, police, military, laboratory, port health authority, judiciary, and rapid response team. If you do not fall into this criteria, please don't try to register for phase one because it will indicate to you that you do not qualify. This is to keep the process orderly and free from chaos and that we can register all Lagosians strictly according to the plan to avoid confusion and to avoid disappointments. The Health Commissioner said those that enrolled in the vaccination program will get two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine, each within 12 weeks apart. And we do know that after your first dose, you can achieve up to 60% protection. And after your second dose, that protection can rise to as high as 80%. It is important to recognize that even after you've been vaccinated, it doesn't guarantee that you, do, you will not contract COVID-19. There is still a possibility that you will contract the virus, but the chances of you developing severe to critical disease are significantly diminished if you have achieved this level of immunity. Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Benga Motosho, hailed the media in Lagos for ensuring accurate information in reporting the state's COVID-19 responses. When the vaccine came, it uh, especially generated so much excitement all over the world. And here in Lagos, new members of the media who have been with us all the way since the journey began, up to this moment, reporting us with great uh, responsibility and great maturity. I would like to thank you for doing this. And for all you have done to show the world how Lagos has been able to handle this problem. The incident commander, Mr. Bajidez from Wolu, the governor, has received accolades. Kudos, Atoma and Atom. I will implore you not to relax on the way you have been reporting this matter. Because that the vaccine has come does not mean that our job as media people is done. We still have to obey the COVID-19 protocol. And this is what I will beg you to keep telling the public. That yes, the vaccine is here, even though we know that it cannot go around everybody. But we have been assured by the experts that the number of people that will be taking the vaccine at the end of the day will be enough for us to be able to get protection. So all of us, we have to ensure that we continue to obey the precautions that have been stated out by the experts, not just because of ourselves, but because of our loved ones. So once again, I would like to thank you for the diligence that you have demonstrated, for the dignity of uh, the media that you have prepared in this uh, particular matter. After the show of confidence, people waited in line to get vaccinated. Medical experts say a single shot of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine would reduce the chance of someone getting ill and needing hospital treatment by 60%. Second dose is up to 80%, while people that have recovered from COVID-19 and get vaccinated would have their immune system boosted by 100%. Once injected like this, it teaches the body's immune system how to fight the real virus, should it need to. Governor Sonwulu's vaccination alongside his deputy and commissioner for health was witnessed by local and international media.
The governor and his deputy incident commander reiterated that the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is safe and asked residents to turn out Emers to get a jab. This, they said, will help to bring the virus to its knees. Um, I was vaccinated with the um, AstraZeneca vaccine and I thought the deputy too um, had his own shot. Um, I can confirm to you that I felt no um, after effect at all. I didn't have any headache or any malaria or any symptoms whatsoever. I think um, it was well received. And I, like I mentioned on Friday, I think um, all of the speculations um, that is going around, I think it's really um, unfounded. I have taken, and you've seen that Lagos have continued to um, um, vaccinate all of our frontline health workers. And so please, let's um, use this media again to inform our citizens well that the, the vaccines, the ones that we have, AstraZeneca, um, has not indicated any side effect whatsoever from anyone. Um, I, for one, do not have any, right? And I'm sure I've also asked around. So there's really nothing for us to, to, to get worried on, right? And just to take it easy and let's encourage others that are on that front line to come forward, you know, um, and, and, get, and get vaccinated. I didn't notice anything on Friday. On Saturday, I felt a little bit bone pains, a bit cold. Of course, the injection site was a bit sore. So I just took some Panadols, I went to sleep. I did a bit of exercise, um, and then I went to sleep. And I woke up yesterday morning and I felt fantastic. You know. But, you know, everybody is different. You know, um, we expect that some people won't feel anything at all. Some people have a bit of body pain. Some may even have shivering. Those are all expected side effects. It's in the literature, we mentioned it, uh, and we just categorize those as adverse events following immunization. There's another category called adverse events of special interest, and those are very rare. So the first type of getting pain at the site of injection or feeling body pains or headache is normal. Most people will experience something like that if you take the vaccine. But the one special interest, they're serious. They cause people to collapse, they go into shock, you know, they get uh, severe complications from, and it can happen with any vaccination, it's not confined to COVID. They're very rare. They happen maybe one in five million people who will take it, who will experience a anaphylactic reaction in other words you react to something in the vaccine maybe you're allergic to one of the chemical carriers or something like that uh, but we're ready for that if you notice the kit that we had at the site it contains steroids and all kinds of medication if anybody gets the vaccine and has a anaphylactic reaction the doctors at the site of vaccination are ready to deal with that you know and of course you know, we have the digital platform, we give you the contact number of our surveillance officers. Once you've been vaccinated, you can reach back to us, either digitally or through a number, and we'll sort you out. And this is one of the reasons why we're not permitting vaccination outside of the accredited facilities that we have designated. It's for many reasons. One, these side effects can happen. Two, we need to keep everyone's data. Number three, it has to go into a central database. And number four, we need to know where you are to give you your second dose. So um, the government is very strict about people giving vaccination outside of government control. And our regulatory agencies, if they find it happening, the sanctions are going to be very severe. So I'm discouraging Lagosians or anyone else in Nigeria, don't try and you know, acquire your own vaccines from sources. First of all, we don't know if the sources are legitimate, if you're using fake drugs, if they've maintained the cold chain, you know, so we have to protect citizens of Lagos State and Nigeria, you know, and on, on the card that we give you is a barcode, right, which means that the dose you got is authentic, is original, is guaranteed, is maintained, is cold chain. Anywhere you travel in the world, they just need to scan that barcode. Your whole data will come up to prove that you did indeed have that vaccination in 
Nigeria or in Lagos on a specific date and you are who you say you are. You can fake the card, but you can't fake the barcode. You know, so that's, that's the role of government. Earlier, the governor signed a bill to combat and stop the spread of coronavirus pandemic 2021 into law. The Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Mojo Sore Onigbanjo, says the coronavirus pandemic law formalizes the structures already in existence in the state for managing COVID-19. The governor has just given his assent to four bills uh, passed into law by the State House of Assembly. Uh, the COVID-19, the COVID, the coronavirus pandemic law 2021 essentially formalizes the structures already in existence in the state for managing COVID-19. It appoints the governor as the chairman of the committee. Uh, also in that committee is the commissioner for health. It has also made a provision of 20 billion naira uh, available in the budget for fighting the pandemic. It has also set out all the penalties for people who fail to wear masks in public, uh, people who fail to observe COVID-19 social distancing regulations. It gives the courts powers to fine and in certain cases to even imprison violators of the law. So with that law, we will use that law to strengthen the state's fight against the spread of the pandemic in Lagos State. It also ensures that uh, people who deliberately know that they have the virus and they infect others. It also takes care of people who escape from isolation centers or who refuse to go to isolation centers. So it covers the a whole gamut of uh, possible offenses under the coronavirus pandemic bill. One of the provisions of the law is the 20 billion naira available to fight the pandemic. Other bills signed into law are legal state prohibition of unlawful societies and cultism 2021. Legal state audit service amendment bill. The governor also swears in two permanent secretaries and inaugurated the Lagos State Public Procurement Agency Governing Board. I will not discriminate on the basis of religion. The major responsibility as member of the Public Procurement Governing Board is to ensure that strict adherence to the provisions of the Lagos State Public Procurement Law. It is your duty to meticulously oversee the procurement process by ensuring that public funds are judiciously expended in terms of accountability, transparency, and value for money. I charge you all to be firm, to be fair, and to be courageous. And of course, not to be selective in the implementation of the state procurement law, which is vested in your power, and to enforce the compliance through the application of appropriate sanctions for breach of the due process. You hold a critical and strategic role in preventing wasteful spending and corruption in public procurement. The government and the citizens of Lagos State, especially the taxpayers, count on, your, on you to keep the procurement process as transparent as humanly possible. To the two permanent secretaries, your appointment comes with great expectation. The restructuring of the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure into two distinct offices with two permanent secretaries was necessitated by the need to engender improved efficiency and a faster delivery to keep projects under the purview of the ministry. I want to charge you to utilize your wealth of experience and knowledge for the expedited and seamless delivery of work and infrastructure in the ministry. United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says that aid agencies' research reveals that 60 million Nigerian households do not have access to clean water, but supplying sufficient water becomes more challenging for the government with urban population expansion. 
Lagos State has become synonymous with massive migration of people, making it even more difficult for its over 20 million residents. I'm a mother, I have a... I can consume like this, six uh, buckets of paint water, the big one, the paint bucket of water for a day. Water is actually accessible, but there are times whereby there won't be light, so we need to call all those uh, Aboki Molam to get water for us. With this in mind, this government's intervention appears to be coming at the right time. It's the signing of Memorandum of Understanding on Strategic Partnership between the Lagos State Government through the Lagos State Water Regulatory Commission and Water Aid. Local and international representatives of Water Aid joined virtually. The Commissioner for the Environment, Tunji Bello, said the MOU demonstrates the priority the government places on availability of water. There is no way by which you can justify why we cannot provide water for every, clean water for every single individual person that lives in our territory. So there is no way. And one of the shortcomings that we, the present administration, discovered was that we've been running water, our water resources, independent of institutional uh, setups that we have. It's not the old uh, institutional mechanisms that we had. We are one body will just sit down somewhere, providing water, detecting the price, detecting everything, and so on. So we believe that with what you are bringing in now, we'll be able to deliberate and able to have the better way of uh, developing better capacity to managing our water resources better. Capacity building, as we all know, focus on organizations' ability to do new things what they currently do. We understand that the need to strengthen institutional capacity and the regulatory framework benchmarking against international best practices must happen if we want to improve performance, enhance our ability to function as a regulatory body, we then must build capacity. This is what Water Aid brings to the table, value addition 9 point. For the country director of Water Aid Nigeria, this is coming at a more appropriate time as the world battles coronavirus pandemic. One of the ways in which you can protect yourself from COVID-19 and you know, its spread is to wash your hands as often as possible. If we do not have proper management and regulation of the sector in terms of water supply, in terms of quality of water, in terms of ability of people to pay for water, the sector will not be sustainable. People will not have access to adequate water for their needs. And then you have large portions of communities excluded from access, and then they become reservoirs for the pandemic. And no matter what you do, it continues to be a reservoir for reinfection of others. At the end of the three years agreement, residents will be able to evaluate the outcome of this initiative. And that's where we draw the curtains onto this edition of Inside Lagos. Let's continue to observe all safety protocols, even when vaccinated, so that coronavirus can be brought to its knees. I'm Ade Doja Salam Adeni. See you next time, and thanks for watching. Bye bye.